In ancient civilizations, honor and respect were marked by the winner of each battle, and over the years have been left for posterity countless armies that made the art of war an immortal story. In various cultures of the world, many of the most prosperous and powerful empires of the time were backed by large and powerful armies, which maintained ingenious battle strategies that marked a sure victory. Japanese Samurai The ancient samurai warriors were powerful men of war, famous for possessing great discipline and honor, which made them legendary warriors throughout history. The samurai lived by the sacred code of the samurai, known as Bushido, in which loyalty, duty, and honor prevailed above all else. These warriors were magnificent, elite, and highly trained soldiers, experts in the use of the bow and sword. Warfare during medieval times in Japan was extremely bloody and tenacious, and one of the major reasons for warfare was money and power. For many generations, the most prestigious men in medieval Japan were the samurai warriors because apart from being extraordinary warriors in combat, they were loyal advisors and faithful allies of their masters. At that time the samurai warriors were hired by the feudal lords to protect their territories and empires. Because the samurai were very skilled in warfare, they could easily defend the territories of their masters and fight arduously with their enemies or tribes of bandits. During the Sengoku Jidai, or period of the fighting kingdoms, which lasted from the end of the 15th century until the establishment of the Edo Shogunate in 1603, anyone could become a samurai through their service on the battlefields, regardless of their birth. However, years later, during the Edo period, a harsh and rigid system was established in which people were separated by social group according to their status or trade. So under this system the samurai were the upper class and ruled Japan, being preceded by the rest of civil society. Over the years, it was no longer necessary for the samurai to fight on the battlefields. Even so, they were highly respected by the Japanese society due to the philosophy they possessed, which was passed from generation to generation, whose general principles were to dedicate their life to perform their actions and fulfill their responsibilities, to serve their lord or master to the extreme of sacrificing their life, and to be prepared to give their own life in case of failure. The latter included the act of seppuku, in which the samurai, for a serious failure, cut his abdomen, taking his own life in a ritual in front of the Japanese society. Sacred Legion of Carthage The Sacred Legion consisted of a phalanx of veteran spearmen, raised in Carthage and trained and armed in the tradition of the Greek hoplites. What gave them their uniqueness was the fact that they were recruited from the population of the city, rather than from the allies, levy soldiers, or mercenaries, who normally made up the bulk of the Carthaginian armies. They were chosen from among the nobility and wealthy citizens. They were trained and disciplined. Thanks to their social position, they could afford full armor, bronze cuirass, greaves, helmet, and a white hoplon. Members of the Sacred Legion were armed with hoplite spears with an iron tip and a bronze pike at the base for balance, although they also carried straight swords. They stood out for their courage, even when they were defeated and were expected to fight to the death, as happened in the Battle of Cremiso in 340 BC. This defeat was a hard blow from which they never recovered. With time, and due to the pressure of Carthage's wars with Rome, the Sacred Legion was replaced by mercenary armies, which were maintained with the wealth obtained from trade. These armies still counted among their ranks a minority of Carthaginian and Libyo-Phoenician citizens, but the old Sacred Legion had ceased to exist. Spanish Tercio The Spanish Tercios were great warriors created by Emperor Charles of Habsburg. These amazing warriors constituted the elite of the Spanish armies, from the 16th century to the 17th century, establishing themselves as the first military force to combine in the same unit, firearms and white weapons, which made them an almost invincible army in the battlefield for more than a century. The Tercios were a warrior unit that was initially prepared as a garrison for the different territories conquered by the Spanish kingdom. However, with time, what in the beginning were garrison troops, later were summoned as support for the different war fronts of the emperor, for their great bravery, courage, and above all for the great fight that they had demonstrated in the battlefield. Thus, for their great performance in combat, the Tercios began to mark their legend of being invincible warriors. 
becoming the elite troops of the emperor's army. The supremacy of the Tercios was based on their great astuteness to organize themselves on the battlefield. Innovation was one of the fundamental roles for the success of their troops, as their war tactics were always renewed and improved. One third was composed of three types of soldiers, pikemen, arquebusiers, and musketeers, which maintained the reputation of being exceptional warriors, especially for the human character they handled, because being mainly noble men, they had an extremely proud character and an unwavering concept of honor, which drove them to achieve victory in war. This powerful weapon was much more lethal than any other, as it marked an important difference concerning the mercenaries who fought for money and wanted to keep their lives to enjoy it, and also for the citizen militias motivated to defend their cities, but mostly without military training. In time, other nations soon copied and adapted the model of the Tercios, recruiting soldiers among the lower nobility and instructing them in the handling of various weapons. The most famous example was the French musketeers, who despite their name also handled the sword and not only the musket. Knight Templar. The Knights Templar was one of the most powerful Christian military orders of the Middle Ages, which remained active for more than two centuries. In 1118, the Order of the Poor Companions of Christ and the Temple of Solomon was founded by a group of nine French knights after the First Crusade. They were later called the Order of Temperance and were the most recognized order of the time for their great strategy and tactics of warfare. Militarily, its members were among the best trained units that participated in the Crusades. The Knights Templar had, as a singular distinction, a long white mantle with a pate cross. The cunning of the Templar warriors was reflected in the creation of new financial and warfare techniques, which aided military innovation. However, despite their great power and strength, rumors generated around the secret initiation ceremonies of the Templars created a great distrust in various groups that supported the order. Philip IV of France, heavily indebted to the order and frightened by its growing power, began to pressure Pope Clement V to take measures against its members and dissolve the order. In 1307 a large number of Templars were imprisoned, induced to confess under torture, and burned at the stake, thus disappearing the great warrior order. Persian Immortal The Persian Immortals were the elite of the Persian army during the Achaemenid Empire. This powerful military order was part of the personal guard of the king and the main shock troops during periods of war. Their power was so extraordinary, they have been considered among the most famous and powerful fighting forces of the ancient world. They were known as the Immortals, due to their policy and military strategy of always keeping the same number of soldiers in their ranks. The Persians had to keep 10,000 warriors on the battlefield at all times. In this way, if one of them died or could not fulfill his responsibilities, another one was chosen to replace him which gave the impression that they could not die, since they never reduced their number despite the serious attacks of their opponents, which led their enemy troops to know them as immortal and invincible beings. They were known as the Immortals because of their great capacity to not fall in battle. The legends and stories that have always circulated about these warriors have placed them among the best warriors in history. Generally, they fought with spears and swords, were fearsome, and above all well-trained, and remained faithful to the service of the king and his defense. Aztec Eagle Warrior The Eagle Warriors were the elite soldiers in the powerful Aztec armies. The Eagle belonged to the Aztec nobility, and from childhood, they were arduously trained and formed with military knowledge, which intensified as they grew older. The Eagle Warriors had a kind of military academy, where they received a stealthy and marked military preparation which would later serve them to be part of the most important unit of the army. These amazing warriors had a rigid recruitment process, as the aspirant to join the elite troops were forced to go through a series of hard tests with physical punishments that helped them to withstand various factors that could happen during the war. The strategies of the Eagle Warriors were extremely famous and well known because they learned to lead a confrontation with cunning, to perfectly plan a good war strategy for each situation on the battlefield and to handle any weapon in the Aztec arsenal. As for the extraordinary clothing that the eagle possessed, it is worth mentioning that they used to wear a mahogany helmet in the shape of an eagle's head decorated with feathers, and a peculiar tunic reinforced with leather, which protected their chests. 
Among their most common weapons were spears, blowguns, azagaya, shields, and the makuwito, which was used as a sword. Mongol Rider The Mongols went from being a nomadic people of plunderers to organizing an empire whose extension exceeded 30 million square kilometers. Their agility when moving and the versatility they demonstrated on the battlefield, being as capable of fighting in open fields as in ambush, led them to become one of the greatest powers in history, and at that time made them the terror of Asia and a large part of Europe. Genghis Khan was a leading Mongol prince and warrior who forged, prepared, and raised a true armed state, in which every man, both in times of peace and war, was mobilized from the age of 15 to 70. The feared Mongol warriors wore light armor covered with silk, and although they often fought with spears or curved swords, their weapon of choice was the compound bow. Each Mongol horseman had three or four horses so as not to tire them, and they were mostly maris so that they could subsist on their milk when the need arose. In cases of extreme necessity, the Mongol warrior was able to drink a certain amount of blood from his horses. This allowed them to travel at great speed, changing mounts very often, each warrior was responsible for his food and equipment, reducing the size of the supply and eliminating the need to set up camp. They made the most of the land, carrying with them means to hunt, fish, and gather. They also carried watertight boats that served to carry water, in case of crossing a river, which they used as floats since they did not know how to swim. Berserker Popularly known as Odin's warriors, the berserkers were groups of feared soldiers who were part of the vanguard of the Viking attacks. These were powerful men who possessed colossal strength and a very aggressive and uncontrolled character. The berserker became famous Viking warriors, well known for arriving on the battlefield, carrying huge sharp two-handed axes, half naked or covered with simple animal skins, which, according to tradition, gave them a mystical power when fighting. In addition, before each battle, they drank a sinister hallucinogenic concoction, which drove them into a state of uncontrolled rage, in which they remained insensitive to pain, bit their shields in the frenzy of their altered state, and went into danger without a care in the world. It is said that for the berserker warriors, this powerful brew was a gift from Odin that helped them to be in an altered state of mind, which would help them in combat, convincing them to fight in an irrational way, which helped them to die with honor, and be well received in Valjala. According to the stories, the berserker had an enormous strength, similar to the strength of ten men in one. It is also said that these feared warriors could transform into bears or wolves at the time of combat. This gift was given by Odin. That is why these powerful warriors stood out for their great aggressiveness and strength, becoming the elite forces of the Viking groups. They plundered and killed indiscriminately, blind with fury, they were too insensitive and capable of doing superhuman things, so in those times they were the most feared warriors by all the known kingdoms. Praetorian Guard The Praetorian Guard was one of the most famous and powerful military units in the history of Rome. Their main function was to protect the emperor in turn above all things, but on several occasions their power was so great that they were the ones who took power away from the emperor, appointing their governor. Because of this, the Praetorians gained a bad reputation that has haunted them for generations, as it has been branded as extremely dangerous because of their proximity to power, since as well as protecting the emperors, they were also capable of assassinating them and elevating to the throne the candidate that suited them. During the Roman Republic, the Praetorians were the personal guard of the commanders. At that time it was a small military force with little prestige, however, with the passing of the years and the arduous training and military innovation, they increased their prestige and strength. The number of Praetorians was increasing, and their importance grew until they became the royal escort of the most powerful emperors of Rome. Augustus, the first emperor of Rome, was in charge of institutionalizing the Praetorian Guard permanently. Around 27 BC, he created nine courts that could total some 4,500 soldiers to protect the entire imperial family. Thus, by the end of the first century AD, it was generally established in ten courts, each with about 480 men, to which a cavalry unit had to be added as support with about 100 horsemen. Over the years, the number of Praetorian soldiers did not stop growing, consolidating itself as one of the best and most powerful armies in history. Ottoman Genissaries 
The Janissaries were a core of the Ottoman Empire formed by specialized infantry units and trained to guard especially the Sultan and his royal palace. This powerful Ottoman guard was first founded by Murad and was initially made up of young men from Christian families and prisoners of war. The Janissaries were the first prosperous Ottoman army, and it was all due to their arduous and meticulous military preparation. The physical training they received was extremely hard and demanding. Generally, those who became members of the Janissaries were instructed in the Muslim religion, even though they came from other cultures and customs, as well as learning languages, literature, and other disciplines. Towards the end of the 16th century, they became an authentic elite corps of difficult access. Since their power in battle was taking space among the other armies, they became so famous and prestigious troops that many families offered their sons to the military Janissaries to socially prosper. The power of the Janissaries became so great that even in the 19th century they tried to overthrow the Sultan, which led Sultan Mahmud II to destroy the order after executing all its members to retain power. Medieval Knight Knights were the most feared and protected warriors on the medieval battlefield, and off the battlefield, they remained among the most elegant and educated members of society. However, Achieving this high status became increasingly difficult as the Middle Ages progressed, as the elites wanted to maintain their exclusivity. But the need to swell their ranks forced many men from outside the upper class to join the troops of the medieval knights. Despite this, several strict rules were maintained to gain access to the prestige of belonging to this feared army. The conditions to become a knight were to be born into a noble family, to be educated since childhood, to have money to buy weapons, horses, and to know the rules of chivalry. Good looks, fine clothes, a striking coat of arms, and the ability to recite poems and songs were optional additions, but highly desirable if one wanted to rise to the top of the elite of medieval society. The process of becoming a knight began in childhood. As military and social training had to be perfectly accomplished, the first step was to become a squire, learn to use the royal arms, and begin training, specifically in knighthood. The squires helped the knights in peace and war, holding their spears or additional shields, cleaning their armor, and taking care of the various horses owned by each knight. The first knights could come from anywhere. All that was needed was courage, hard work, and good economic capacity. Many of the early knights took their knightly titles on the battlefield, for often, after showing great courage and skill in combat with their enemies, they were made part of the medieval knighthood. The medieval mounted warriors, by the end of the 10th century, were knights who had become the most relevant and powerful military corps of the time, because only they possessed the necessary military training and enough wealth to maintain the optimal weapons and horses to be able to develop their typical form of combat. Spartan Hoplite Sparta was one of the most important Greek cities of the archaic and classical eras and was famous for its great military prowess. The Spartans had a very marked military society, for at the top of society were the Spartan warriors and conquerors, soldiers who formed a minority of 9,000 men, who held all the public offices and led the powerful Spartan army. Thus, the soldiers were placed in the upper class, while any other person with any other office was frowned upon or unworthy of them. Sparta was a purely military state, and everything that was done had to be in function of the army and its conquests, the Spartans did not work or do any productive activity. Since it was said that that was what the Ilotas and the Pericos were for, because the warriors were not interested in learning about other arts such as philosophy, but only cared about training from a very young age for war and thus extending the borders of the state. The demands of the Spartans for those who wished to enter their armies were too rigid even from the birth of a new Spartan because when children were born with defects or disabilities were cruelly killed and thrown from the top of Mount Taijito, to avoid according to the high Spartan military that the race of warriors was weakened. On the other hand, when a healthy child reached the age of seven, he or she immediately became part of the arduous Spartan military training, where they were separated into groups and lived in barracks ensuring that from childhood the army would be exceptionally barbaric. The professional and well-trained Spartan hoplites were probably the best and most feared soldiers in Greece, fighting with distinction in key battles, such as Thermopylae and Plataea in the early 5th century BC. 
Spartan warriors had a strong emphasis on military training, for through this they achieved relatively sophisticated battle maneuvers, which made them greatly feared throughout Greece, and a great legend in history. Gladiador Romano Los guerreros gladiadores eran mayormit criminals, esclavos y hombres libres que combation en la arena de los anfiteatros, como entretenimiento de la clase alta. Muchos morían en el campo de batalla, pero muchos otros esi conversion en verdaderos ídolos de las multitudes que los enaltician. Los gladiadores eran meramente bienes de mercado, y estaban entrenados netamente para matar, sin embargo, estos encarnaban los valores de masculinidad exaltados por la sociedad romana, y podían convertirse en héroes populares y objetos de deseo para las mujeres. Su profesión de gladiador no estaba destinada tan solo al comate, sino que ofrecía un entrenamiento dirigido a desarrollar las virtudes guerreras y a fomentar el arte de la espada. Los condenados a trabajos forzados, podían convertirse en lucadores profesionales al cumplir parte de su pena en una escuela de gladiadores, donde un maestro los entrenaba para lucar de forma ejemplar. Al ingresar al entrenamiento en el Ludus, cada alumno se especializaba en un arma distinta que distinguía a cada tipo de gladiadores como Samnitas, Provocators, Richierios, Trachos, Mermelones, Sagittarios. Y cada uno era experto en un arma, sin embargo, esto no significa que no pudieran utilizar otras armas con perfección. El adiestramiento estaba confiado a un antiguo gladiador veterano, que únicamente había aludido durante los entrenamientos. Los aprendices practicaban con un forit de madera, y así bachan contra una estica fijada en el suelo, con una mano sostiene en la espada y con la otra, un escudo de mimbre. Algunos gladiadores fueron tan populares que merecieron pomas. En los que eran comparados con héroes míticos como Miliagro o Jason. <laughs>